I read your piece on um, on the Ukraine in the Washington Post that came out this week, and it was very interesting and I think important piece because our dialogue, our national dialogue on on Ukraine, has gotten so out of whack it seems, and it seemed like a refreshing breath of sanity, including what I thought was uh, a pivotal paragraph in your piece, which I'll just quote a couple lines from and then get your thoughts on. You wrote that U.S. actions over the past several months have defied common sense, given the deep divisions in Ukrainian society and the vital interest Russia has in the country. You say it was a provocative step for the United States to immediately and unconditionally recognize the new government as legitimate. And then you go on to say the media and political class have egged on the administration in a rash and destructive foreign policy, and that the debate has had an Alice in Wonderland quality to it. Even that leaks from the White House have added to this sense of hysteria, which suggests that the administration may, in a sense, be egging itself on. It accounts for this hallucinatory uh, quality of the debate about Ukraine that's gotten escalated to such a fever pitch. You know, a lot of what happens with uh, our foreign policy narratives, our domestic policy narratives, come from um, a narrative that is uh, untrue, a narrative that needs questioning, a narrative that defies common sense. You know, my husband and I, Stephen Cohen and I, wrote in The Nation last week that we're, you know, we're on the verge of a Cold War against Russia, and there's been no debate. And what does that say about representative democracy or the failure of democracy, that there's scarcely been a public word of de debate, much less opposition from the American political or media establishment? You know, Richard, I think what happens, they say that in... Uh, Truth is the first casualty of war. I think in the case of Ukraine, complexity and history. As I write in this Washington Post piece, you know, Ukraine is a deeply divided country. Ukraine is on the border of Russia. Behind all of this is the fact that for 20 plus years, the United States has driven a policy of NATO expansion to Russia's borders. And I think that got lost in a lot of the hysteria. And that the EU decision, the Ukraine's decision to join the EU, uh, and then back off, because I think Ukraine understands it needs Russia and the West, instigated a hysteria, a hysteria that, we are, that we are seeing escalate every day. The key is that it makes no sense to treat Russia's actions as an existential threat to the post-Cold War international order, given that the West needs Russian cooperation to stabilize Ukraine, both politically and financially. How do I explain this delusional, virtual, de sort of hallucinatory, hallucinatory quality to the debate, as you well put it? You know, I think when you come to these moments, war parties in both countries are empowered, and uh, it is certainly the case that Russia has legitimate grievances. It is certainly the case that we are being uh, bombarded with misinformation, disinformation from many sides. But I think what we need to do is restore some common sense to this dialogue, and that's what my piece was trying to do, and lay out the parameters of some diplomatic process that would defuse, de-escalate, and lead to a process where Ukraine would emerge as a viable democratic country. Because at the moment, Richard, as you know, Ukraine is battered. It's bankrupt. It's facing divisions that are either on the verge of or are civil war. So I think the bottom line is that if we're going to see a Ukraine emerge whole with the possibility of democracy and prosperity, I think we need both East and West to be part of um, what happens in the future. And that means reality, that means a return to common sense, and it means some sense of history and complexity, and not just saber-rattling and uh, what passes for debate inside the Beltway.